right, in five, four, three, two, one. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another session of Office Hours. My name is Adrian. I'm the CEO and founder of Groundhog, and we're going to have another unscripted session today. We've been super busy with our 2.2 launch, which officially was released yesterday, which is super exciting. So not a whole ton of time to prepare a kind of structured lesson today, but nonetheless, we are going to spend uh, the majority of the time answering your burning questions and helping you overcome roadblocks in your business. At any time, if you have a question that you need to answer, whether it's about Groundhog, marketing automation, uh, specific extensions that we have, uh, best practices, you can just type those questions into the stream comments, which I have on my right here. I will be able to repeat the question uh, and essentially provide you with an answer right here on the spot. If I don't have an answer to your question, I will point you in the direction of whoever will have that answer for you. Uh, so this office hour session, as well as previously recorded office hours, are being made available on the Academy site. Uh, all the office hours from number, I think, 20-something up until today are available there, so you can go ahead and check those out. There's some really good ones uh, that came out a few weeks ago, so I highly recommend that you go see that. And if you want to see a replay of this office hours, it will be made available on academy.groundhog.io. A couple of announcements. 2.2 is, of course, now available for update. It has a significant number of improvements over the previous version, namely the all-new reporting experience and the all-new executive dashboard. Two amazing places to get quality insights into how your marketing and sales is performing. Uh, currently, in addition to the new reporting dashboard that's available for the main Groundhog Core plugin, we are working on adding new reporting features to additional plugins like our sales pipeline and really simple payments, WooCommerce, digital downloads, uh, lots of good stuff coming up from our extensions reporting as well with that new reporting interface available. So keep on the lookout for updates for those extensions as well. Currently, there is a three-year term special offer that we have going on, which ends May 31st. Essentially, what we are providing is a way to get three years, a three-year license of Groundhog for the cost of two years. So if you're planning on using Groundhog as a critical part of your business, you can save an entire year renewals fee by paying for two years up front. So that's available for the agency license, the pro license, as well as the plus license. Uh, and instead of paying $3,000 for the agency license, you only pay two. So that's a pretty sweet deal, which is available until May 31st. If you already have a one of these license, but not three-year deal, we are offering prorated upgrades. So you can essentially pay the difference between what you've already paid and still get a free year of Groundhog, essentially. So it's a really, really amazing deal uh, currently available right now. It comes with the full term of support. So you get three years license, three years support for the cost of two years. So really, really good stuff going on there. If you are interested in having a prorated upgrade for an existing license holder, uh, simply message us on our live chat or open a support ticket and we will send you a special link in order to upgrade to one of these new plans. So this offer does end May 31st uh, and probably won't show up again for a while. So if this is interesting for you, you should definitely pick it up now. So as I mentioned at the beginning, this is a more unscripted office hours and I am simply going to be answering questions for the majority of this. So if you have any questions, please do just pop them in the chat section and I'll be able to repeat them and provide you with, uh, with some detailed insight and hopefully some answers. So we're going to head into our Q&A period. If uh, no questions come in, we'll find something else to chat about.
So it looks like uh, everybody's being a little bit shy today, which is no issue, so no questions are coming in. So what can we talk about? Um, Michael says that the new improvements are great. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate that, and uh, I'm glad you're enjoying them. Uh, by the way, uh, for 2.2, uh, we have released uh, two patch fixes uh, since our release yesterday, just some minor stuff. Uh, to do with some of the extensions. So if you have not updated, uh, the most current version is 2.2.2. Uh, so make sure that you have the latest patch install, just a couple of uh, quick hot fixes for some minor stuff. So make sure that you go and do that. Let's talk about... Uh, and Dee says she's not too familiar yet, so she doesn't have any immediate questions. No worries, D. Welcome to the community. Um... If you are not familiar yet and you are looking to become more familiar, we do have resources for that, and that is on our Academy site. So go to academy.groundhog.io, and I'll actually open it up here in the browser. So our Academy site uh, has a few free courses for you to get started. So go to courses, and you're going to want to take the official quick start course for the Groundhog community. What this course does is it allows you and walks you through the process of setting up your first lead magnet download funnel with Groundhog in under an hour. It'll get you to send a broadcast email to your list to promote your lead magnet. Uh, and it's gonna really just get the ball rolling for you. And uh, the URL for this is here. And I am going to uh, paste that in the chat section for you there, D. So if you're looking for a way to kind of get yourself familiar and just get the ball rolling, that is the best way to go about doing that, is this quick start course. Uh, we have another course as well. Um, if you are in the membership LMS space, uh, you're providing courses or your own learning management software, then we also have this other great course, which is also free, called Course Creator Essentials. It will walk you through a bunch of digital marketing strategies that tie Groundhog and your LMS platform of choice together so that you can essentially uh, enroll, engage, and uh, you can increase enrollment, increase engagement, as well as increase revenue from your students, uh, essentially superpowering your LMS to get a lot of better results for you. So those two courses are available for free on the Groundhog Academy site at any point, and uh, great, 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 great content in there. So go ahead and check those out. Again, if there are any questions related to Groundhog, email marketing, best practices, funnels, whatever is currently preventing you from getting the ball rolling or moving the needle forward, I am at your disposal to help you come up with some solutions for that. And uh, you can just type your question in the comment. I'll repeat it live, and I'll get you an answer as best I can. All right. So I'm not seeing uh, I'm not seeing any questions come in still. So let's talk about a few of the other kind of like. Uh, other updates that go along with 2.2 but aren't really the main focus. Uh, so the first one of those is we have a new helper function, new helper plugin for agencies uh, and Groundhog Power users. And that is available. So if you are a pro license holder or an all access pass license holder, or really if you have any premium plan, Go to your downloads page, which is account all access downloads, and there's this new download button where you can download the extension manager. Now, what the extension manager does is it is a helper function. So the old way of installing extensions is you have to scroll through this whole list and you have to download it and then you have to upload it to the site and then you have to... Uh, license it and then click that activate button in the settings licenses page and it was like a four to five step process which is like you know it's long especially if you're kind of using groundhog every single day and you're implementing it for clients or you're implementing it for your own website properties it's a time-consuming process to just get everything installed so what we have is you can now 
just install this one plugin, which is the uh, extension manager slash helper plugin. And what it does is it will add a new menu item to your Groundhog menu called extensions. And let's make this full screen here just so it's more pretty to look at. And what you can do now is you can essentially just enter uh, what's called the master license key, which is just your pro plan, your plus plan, your WAS, your all access pass license key. You can just enter that there and then save that license key. And you can one click install and license any of the extensions that we have on our store. So we can see that we have a lot of them here. If I want to install the form styling extension now, all I have to do, I don't have to go to the website, I don't have to go anywhere else. I just click this install and activate button and it will automatically install and license the extension from my WordPress dashboard. And if we go to our settings, now that we've clicked that button and I go to licenses, We can see that form styling has now been added and licensed for me without me having to go to the site and go back and forth. So uh, that's a really, really, really nice uh, little plug in there for people who are Groundhog Power users who use Groundhog day in and day out and they're tired of all of the back and forth downloading, installing, licensing, downloading, installing, licensing. Uh, we now have this for you, so it makes it a whole lot easier. I have a uh, question. I have a few questions now. Uh, which is awesome. So Mark Williams asks, I uh, was browsing recently and may have missed something, but I noticed on the funnel steps, uh, the data presented is quite sparse. For example, an add a tag step just displayed that twice without showing the tag itself. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to reread that again. Uh, was browsing recently, may have missed something, but I noticed on the funnel steps, the data presented was quite sparse. For example, an add a tag step just displayed that twice without showing the tag itself. I'm not sure what you mean, Mark. If you can elaborate, uh, maybe uh, throw in a screenshot or something so I know exactly what you're talking about, uh, but I'm not exactly sure what you mean by just displayed that twice. It's a little bit ambiguous. So if you could just clarify that a little bit for me, I'm happy to answer that question for you. Michael asks, what is the best practice when using Groundhog on a tourism site? There's a high traffic and much spam, so it's hard to sift through the mail. Yeah, that's a tough one. Uh, so if you're getting like a ton of spam submissions and opt-ins into Groundhog, there's a few things uh, that you can do to prevent that. So number one, is you can install something called WordFence. Uh, now, WordFence is a security plugin, and essentially what it allows you to do is most spam comes from uh, specific regions in the world, and what WordFence does is it will allow you to essentially just block form submissions for specific regions, uh, and that's in their pro version, which we actually have on our site. If you're not interested in that and you don't want to kind of spend any money on security plugins, then you have a couple other options. So number one is uh, we have an integration with something called uh, Zero Bounce. Uh, Groundhog Download Zero Bounce integration. Zero Bounce uh, is a list cleaner. So what it does is you can uh, install this, you can buy credits from Zero Bounce, and it will essentially check if the email is valid or not. Uh, a little bit of a, you know, there is a warning. It is not 100% accurate. I'd probably say it's around 80% accurate, but if you're doing like huge volume, then it doesn't really matter all that much. Um, but you can upload this to your site and any new contacts that come in will automatically be checked to see if their email address is valid or not. And if it's not valid, then we're just going to essentially mark the contact as spam so you don't have to send them any emails or waste any time with it. Uh, you can also always do it the old fashioned way. Uh, which is available in Groundhog by default. If you go to contacts, uh, most spam submissions come from similar or the same IP address. What you can do is you can mark any contact as spam at any time and will automatically blacklist the IP address that they signed up from. Uh, so if the, the same IP address continues to try and spam your website, then they won't be able to because the IP address is blocked. Uh, those are a few options for you there, Michael. Uh, hopefully that helps. So again, to recap, WordFence, 
Uh, probably the easiest option, although the most expensive. Uh, zero bounce, pretty cost effective, not a total 100% accurate. Uh, and you can also just do it the old fashioned way uh, with spam, uh, marking things as spam. Um, on a side note, there is kind of like one alternative option. If a lot of the spam email addresses have like s similar domain names or similar um, TLDs or anything like that, uh, then what you can do is you can go to settings. Uh, you can go to your permalink settings. And, uh, oh, no, sorry, discussion settings. And uh, on the comment block list, uh, you can add phrases, and all Groundhog form fields are always compared against this list uh, to check if something is spam. So you can also type in keywords here, and submissions containing those keywords will be marked as spam as well. So those are another, that's another option for you there. Michael has a follow-up question. He says, I have iThemes Pro Ascomit and Google reCAPTCHA and still some get through. The automation is my main concern. Uh, so if you have all of those things and they're still getting through, then what you might wanna do is uh, send us, send our support team maybe a couple of uh, those spammy submissions and maybe we can find some sort of common denominator uh, and create some sort of block to prevent that. Um, if you already have all of that going for you, then I would start playing with the comment block list because that's kind of like the most rudimentary level of checking, but the most effective because it's basically like if I don't want anybody with a .ru email address to, to enter my site, all you have to do is add .ru here and no one with a .ru email address will be able to uh, sign up. So it's that easy. So if you're all out of ideas, go to settings discussion and start making use of that comment block list because this is checked uh, for spam in Groundhog as well. So hopefully that helps. Uh, Lewis asks, uh, in previous sessions, you mentioned that you were going to prepare a course dedicated to e-commerce. Do you have a launch date? I do not have a launch date and it is still my intention to record that course. Uh, we've just been incredibly busy with 2.2. Uh, now that that's over, maybe we'll be able to dedicate some more time to uh, continue uh, continual development of courses. Uh, no ETA on that. It hasn't been started, and uh, we're kind of probably going to be waiting until we release the updates for RSP, WooCommerce, and EDD before we start that, because we are going to be want to be showing those reporting features uh, when we record this new course, and those are not necessarily uh, ready yet. So hopefully soon. Um, and Louis also has a follow-up question. Do you plan to have an integration with the checker? I'm not exactly sure what the checker is, but if you could provide a link to exactly what you mean, I'm happy to look into that for you. And we can discuss it maybe on the call. For anybody who is curious about integration requests and uh, wants to make a request, uh, you can go to the following link, which I'm going to paste in the... chat there so i just pasted that link in the chat uh, we are always open to feature request and integration requests and you can make that integration or feature request here uh, you can choose what kind of uh, request that you want to make so integration with like another SaaS product or an integration with the wordpress plugin brand new feature an existing feature lots of choices uh, and we walk you through the process of describing the feature so that we have uh, the uh, highest level of information uh, available so that we can act on your request. So if you're curious about integration requests or making those, please do so on this form. Uh, that would help us out significantly because it's hard to keep a feature request outside uh, of this process. And apparently the checker, according to Louis, is... Uh, the, as one of Zero Bounce's competitor. Let's check that out. Okay. 
Uh, we're always open to adding more integrations. So, Louis, if you'll do me a favor and uh, maybe request an integration with this service on the feature request form that I just pasted in the chat. If you could do that for me, that would be fantastic. Uh, and that would help me out uh, greatly. Where am I going here? Let's go back here. All right, so thank you for uh, Louis, Michael, and Mark for your questions. Mark, uh, I haven't seen a follow-up from you yet on the add tag step thing. Uh, so if you can clarify that just a little bit for me uh, before the end of the session, I'm happy to, to talk with you about that. Uh, I just need you to clarify it for me because I'm having a hard time. Uh, and great, here is the follow-up. Um, in scanning the steps, I'm not sure why we can't use the space to show tags selected. Let's see, and there's a screenshot. Okay, I see. So you're talking about, so in the uh, list view, um, let's open up a funnel here. So you're talking about, so in this in the drop down list view, why the tags are not shown here. Uh, the reason for that um, is this is, well, there's a lot of information that can be applied to each step, and it could get pretty messy over here on the list side if we started to add uh, all of that information. And you can see in this particular step, I have like four tags there, which are pretty long. And if I showed all of those tags in here, it could get pretty large and kind of ruin the, well, aesthetic value of the list and, and break the, the cohesive formatting there. Also, you can get pretty long with the uh, step titles as well. So I can like keep on going here and you can see that that starts to take up space as well. So it's really not, I don't think it's conducive to uh, uh, the UI and the user experience to add all of that information there. What you can do though, is you can always change the step title and uh, I do that a lot. So for example, for this one, I can just change it to, you know, apply marketing tags or something. So that way I have some sort of context about uh, what I'm looking at. And another note is uh, you can actually add notes to steps now. So under these notes setting or under the step settings, there is actually now a notes section as well. So if you are designing funnels for customers and clients, then you can possibly add instructions in this area. So I can say instructions for the step, do not touch. Uh, and that's something that you can do now as well to add additional context to the settings of the step. Uh, so those are two ways that you can uh, ad provide additional context, but I don't think that I'm keen on adding all of this information into this view. Uh, it, would, it would really, I think it would just make the aesthetic and the user experience a little bit more difficult. Of course, we are always open to uh, examining it a little bit more and if you would like to do that and you'd like to request that uh, we do so then we do examine every single request that we get on this page so mark if you want to see uh, well we can investigate it but in order for us to investigate it you just have to request it on this feature request page and we'll be happy to look into it a little bit more. Okay, so you've seen that, awesome, great. Um, we just wanna keep, I think I wanna keep this, uh, the step kind of flow as clean as possible, but that's why you can edit the step at any of the step title anytime if you need to provide additional context. Um, in the meantime, so as a as a right now solution, use the step title, and we'll investigate adding more context uh, to the flow in the future. 
Okay, so any other questions, uh, feel free to pop those in the chat area at the moment. Uh, we are approaching the 25 minute mark and I think we're gonna end today around the 30 minute mark. So we have five more minutes for some questions. Any one last minutes, it doesn't have to be specifically about Groundhog, but it, it can be about best practices, about email marketing, about some of our extensions. It can be about uh, other service providers. It can be about learning management, uh, e-commerce, uh, lots of uh, stuff that we can talk about here. It can be about an espresso. I'm not sure if anyone is, a, is an a espresso fan, but I have a, an espresso machine and uh, it is honestly a lifesaver for late nights and early mornings. Okay, I'm not seeing more questions come in uh, just yet. So either uh, that's one of two options. I'm just really good at answering everybody's questions uh, ahead of time so that there's not none left over for office hours or everybody's too shy because they worried they have, they have a silly question. If you think you have a silly question, I want you to understand that there's no such thing as a silly question. And uh, we are there's a lot of different uh, people on different levels of Groundhog experience in this group. Uh, and I am here to bring everybody up to kind of the same level here. So if you think that you have a silly question and you're worried that it's silly so you don't want to ask it live, I want to assure you that there's no such thing and that uh, all questions are created equal and I will help you get an answer to that question. And just as I'm kind of going on the spiel, three new questions coming, which is, which is great. Um, so, uh, the first question is from Mark. Mark asks, is there an API to build slash create funnels? Uh, no, there is not. Um, uh, simply because it's kind of, I don't, I don't understand why that would be useful. If you think you can make a case for why an API to build slash create funnels would be useful, uh, use that same feature request form and then make your case there. Uh, if we find that you make a good case for why that sort of API capability would be useful, more than happy to investigate it. Uh, there, we have a lot of actual, uh, we have an ability to create kind of funnels on the fly. So creating an API endpoint wouldn't necessarily be a bit of a stretch, uh, but it's all dependent on the use case. So make a case for it and we'll be happy to look into it for you, Mark. Yisrael. Oh, hi, Israel. I haven't seen you in a while, is back. And Israel asks, is there a built-in solution for filtering reviews to guide people to leave reviews in the correct place? Um, so Groundhog doesn't necessarily have any kind of review feature. So I'm going to try and dissect your question a little bit more. So is the, how are you collecting? Oh, and there's actually a follow-up that I didn't see. So say a star system. Okay, so five stars goes to Google and two stars goes to us. Um, yeah, so there's a couple ways that you can uh, do that. And I'm gonna show you the easiest way that requires no development, no extensions, and, uh, and is really just quite easy. So I am going to open up my site here. And let's go to add a new, adding a new email. This is applicable to any, everybody, by the way. So if you are collecting reviews, and if you're not, you should be, uh, this is an effective way in order to ensure that uh, detractors, people who are going to give you a bad review, don't end up in areas where they could leave a negative review that other people can, you can see. So let's go to add a new email. And I'm just going to say review request. By the way, I've been testing uh, review subject lines and nine times out of 10 review, please question mark is the best performing subject line uh, that I've sent out. So if you're collecting reviews, then review, please easiest way to get a review in terms of subject line. 
So Yisrael, the best way and the most effective way to send an email asking for review and direct people to the appropriate places is to do the following. Uh, And then what you can do is you can link each of these to the appropriate place you want this person to leave a review. So if I want to uh, send three and above to Google, then I just go grab my Google review listing and I add the link and I put those there. And if I have a specific landing page for uh, two and one star reviews, then what I'm gonna do is I am going to add a link, uh, the two stars to uh, the landing page where I collect or mitigate those two star reviews. So super easy and effective way uh, because the person, when they come and they see the email, they're just going to click the appropriate link that best suits them. Uh, so there's no need to kind of like get super complicated with it. What you can also do is if you want to make it look a little bit pretty, Groundhog emails support emojis, which is awesome. So let's go grab a star emoji just from uh, Emojipedia or getemoji.com or wherever you like to get your emojis. Let's grab the star one. And we can actually just go ahead and we can copy that just with uh, Command C or Control C. And let's uh, do this. And what you can do is you can just link each one of those options. They're gonna click the one that best suits them. And uh, there you go, super easy. That is how uh, I would go about collecting and sending reviews to different spots in Israel. Most effective, easiest to implement. Uh, and once you know that this particular solution is working, you can tweak it and improve it any way that you see fit. So hopefully Israel, that helps you out. Uh, let's go on. So Mark asks, if I have complex logic for a conditional step, not easily supported by the filter UX, which we currently have, is there some way to integrate with my own plugin? For example, can I specify a hook I might write to evaluate if a context satisfies a step? Yes, yes you can. That's how our conditional logic uh, extension works is you can just hook into uh, any, you can just hook into the actual event run process and uh, use any particular filters that you want. So if you want to do that, then absolutely. Uh, you can just uh, download and buy the conditional logic extension, copy the implementation of how it works, and then define your own logic. Yes. Uh, hopefully that answers your question, Mark. Uh, Michael asks, uh, any word from ThriveFrames to integrate Groundhog? I've been very squeaky wheel to them. I haven't used the HTML method for Groundhog and Thrive since their new theme builder was released. Uh, and is still set up the same way for Thrivelys to use for Groundhog. Uh, yeah, or Thrive Themes, Thrive Themes has been reluctant to add us as an integration. That, as far as I'm aware, that opinion has not changed. Um, if you want to request an API integration with our service, with Groundhog, then you have to go to this form or this page and scroll all the way down and then fill out the Google form that's linked here. And uh, that will add a thumbs up essentially to our integration with Thrive Themes and hopefully get them to build it finally. Um, but as far as I'm aware, they have not taken action on that yet. So uh, I'm sorry to say, Michael, that you will still have to use the HTML integration for now. Uh, other, alternative, other alternatives include using WordPress users or Zapier in order to make that connection work, but thus there is no direct uh, integration, unfortunately. So continue to be that squeaky wheel for us. And uh, we are also continuing to ask and ask and ask, but 
uh, the so far it has not come to fruition. Hopefully in the future, I would I would like to see that. I used to use Thrive Themes a lot. Uh, I am not really a fan of it as much as I once was as a developer. The problem with Thrive Themes is that uh, we can't make our own integration because uh, none of their plugins have any filters or hooks or any sort of plugin developer friendliness. Uh, it's really a closed system, but they wanted it that way so that they control the entire user experience. Unlike something like Elementor, which has a large developer community, Thrive Themes developer community is non-existent because it can't, because they want to control that experience. Uh, those are two very different business models, and uh, to each their own. As a developer, I prefer the integratability and the extendability of stuff like Elementor and Groundhog, of course. Uh, so I'm not as much of a of a big big as big Thrive Theme as once, but I use it for a very very long time. The templates that they have are solid. The tools that they do produce are pretty solid, but it's kind of just comes down to that, you know, developerness that I need in the products that I recommend and choose. So, just a few thoughts there. I'm gonna have a sip of my coffee quickly. There we go. Uh, Leon asks, what theme does everyone use for Groundhog for conversion? I'm assuming what theme do you use in order to get the best conversions? Uh, the theme does not have a huge bearing on the conversion rate of, let's say, a Groundhog form. Uh, it really comes down to copy, landing pages, and a whole bunch of stuff. But I can share with you my setup that I use to build our website, which is groundhog.io. I am more than happy to share, share with you our technology stack for that, uh, which I'm quite happy with, by the way. So our technology stack for groundhog.io is as follows. So we use Astra Pro. So we use uh, the pro version of the WP Astra theme, and I'm very happy with that theme. It's uh, very fast, uh, it's easy to customize, and it works great with Elementor. We use Elementor Pro as our page builder of, pro of choice. So let's go ahead and pull that up. Uh, Elementor has a ton of page templates now, and Astra Pro also. I think when you buy Astra Pro, you get their page templates as well. They have a bunch of site templates for Elementor, which is pretty cool. Uh, so if you're looking for ways to get started, uh, Astra and Elementor, I think, is kind of like the ultimate combination for web design these days. I know a lot of others have kind of their own, uh, their own preferences into each their own, but I find that whenever I'm spinning up a new site, which is quite often, uh, for all of our digital assets out there, uh, Astra and Elementor are kind of like my go-tos. And for our e-commerce, we sell digital downloads. So for that, we use Easy Digital Downloads as our e-commerce provider. Uh, and uh, this is a very, very, very developer-friendly product. Uh, if you're not much of a developer, you might want to go with something like WooCommerce instead. Um, but if you're developer oriented, then you're going to want to use easy digital downloads because working with it is uh, is just really, really easy and really effective. So hopefully that helps you, Liam. Edgardo Hernandez has a question. Uh, hi, Hernando. Well, welcome to the call. Uh, feel free to type your question in the chat area. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat that question live, and then I will be able to answer it right here on the call for you. So uh, when you get a chance, just go ahead and type that question, your full question, into the chat, and I'll be happy to help. By the way, I do apologize if there is a um, a lag between when I'm speaking and when you get an answer. There is a 20 second delay from when my words or the words leave my mouth and they actually reach you on the receiving end. Uh, so if there's kind of just like dead space, it's just because I'm waiting for the words to reach you so I can get uh, an interaction from the audience. So if you see dead space, that is the reason for that. 
Mark Williams asks, do you have a plan, uh, planned oxygen integration? Uh, I can't say that I do. Uh, we don't, uh, oxygen doesn't seem to be a super huge uh, player, at least in our community at the moment. So, and those who use oxygen don't necessarily seem to, I mean, we have a couple oxygen users, but the groundhog integration isn't necessarily a deal breaker. So it's not currently on our list. Uh, again, going back to that feature request form, uh, if you ever want an integration or you want us to investigate something, we look at every single line item that we receive from that form and you can simply pop in there and vote for it by requesting it, making a use case for why you'd find it useful. In most cases, uh, if you're using an unsupported page builder or form, then you just use the Groundhog built-in form or the HTML integration. Those are kind of like your two go-to ways in order to get uh, leads from your page builder, or your form builder of choice into Groundhog. It's just using either the, ground, the default Groundhog form because Groundhog is a built-in form provider and or using the HTML integration again from the web form and just plopping that into your page builder. Uh, that's the way it works for Thrive, and I think it works the same way for Oxygen Builder as well. So hopefully that answers your question, Mark. Um, we are open to them uh, providing the integration actually as well. So maybe we can. what we can do is we can reach out to them and say, hey, listen, can you support us as a support integration for your form builder? We know that Beaver Builder did that, uh, and Beaver Builder is now a supported integration in their form builder. So hopefully that's something that we'll be able to start seeing as well, instead of us being the onus of creating every single integration. Uh, Edgardo's question. Okay, so Edgardo asks, when I sell a course, can I put the customer in a specific list automatically? Uh, the answer to that question is, of course, absolutely. Uh, so using any of our LMS integrations, I think it's LMS. Yes, it is. <clears throat> So using any of our uh, LMS integrations, we have Tutor, Learn Dash, Lifter, and eLearn Commerce. At the moment, all of <laughs> they all love blue. What is it with LMS providers in blue? I don't know. I went for orange, but uh, so all of our blue LMS integrations here, uh, you can purchase and install any one of these. And what it will allow you to do is whenever a course or a lesson is completed in any of uh, these extensions, you'll be able to apply a tag uh, when that action happens. Uh, and to show you an example of what that looks like, if I open up the Lifter LMS integration, which is what we use, by the way, on our Groundhog Academy site, uh, you will see a panel that looks like this, and you can see that you can add tags when someone starts a course, at the end of a course, uh, you can remove tags, and you can also add and remove tags for specific lessons. Uh, you can use the same thing for memberships in Lifter as well. And uh, Gard is saying he uses Learn Dash, and it's basically the exact same thing for Learn Dash. So let's go check out the Learn Dash one. So Learn Dash, exactly the same. Uh, you can apply tags, start of the course, end of the course. Uh, for specific lessons, uh, and it also we have an additional quiz integration for Learn Dash as well. So you can apply or remove tags when someone completes a specific quiz. So hopefully that answers your question, Edgardo. Uh, you just need the uh, specific Learn Dash integration, and that will be able to help you out. If you want more information on LMS using LMS with Groundhog, we have a free course on academy.groundhog.io called Course Creators Essentials. And I will just uh, reply to your question with that. And this is a free course that will walk you through a lot of the strategies that you can deploy with Groundhog and using an LMS at the same time. Hopefully that helps you out a little bit. Uh, Mark Williams asks, uh, following up on a question about the SendGrid integration, um, does your SendGrid plugin support a log but don't send option? Uh, so the SendGrid integration doesn't do any logging at all. Um, 
so no, the answer to that question is no, because uh, it doesn't do any logging. Any logging is technically done by the event queue. So if I open up our event queue here, If, uh, let's say, an event fails to send, like an email fails to send, it's going to show up here with a non marketable status or a WP mail failed status uh, or anything like that. So that's really how the logging is done in Groundhog. We don't maintain like a separate log for uh, the any of our email service providers uh, at the moment. So no. If you would like, again, it all comes back to if you would like to see an integration or uh, see that extension happen, uh, then what you can do is you can uh, simply add a feature request and request that we add uh, some sort of logging feature to any of our service provider extensions, but we don't do any logging at the moment, Mark. All right, we're coming, we're approaching the 46 minute mark. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it off here and uh, let's head back to our presentation. All righty. So if you need any additional help beyond the questions that I was able to answer for you today, uh, you can go to academy.groundhog.io and uh, take any of our free courses as well as watch all of the replays of uh, past office hours, including this one today. If you need implementation help, we have a list of over 30 certified partners available to help you. Uh, you can find those at our certified partner directory. And if you believe that uh, you know a colleague, maybe a business partner or a friend who would benefit from using Groundhog, uh, you can earn commissions whenever they buy something, become an affiliate at affiliate area forward slash registration. If you're not following us already, you should be. Uh, you can join us on Facebook, Twitter, as well as YouTube, uh, where we will be repo reposting the recording of this office hours as well. If you have yet to leave a review, I would be eternally grateful if you did. Uh, reviews allow us to get more customers, which means more developers, uh, which means more features that you want and love faster. Uh, so every single review helps. We're at 55 star reviews right now, which is awesome. It'd be great, uh, be awesome to get that number to 100. Uh, so if you wouldn't mind taking a few minutes at the end of this call, go to wordpress.org forward slash plugins forward slash groundhog and leave a five star review. If you have any more questions, that is what the Facebook group is for. Uh, feel free to post in the Facebook group and we will respond, either myself, a, a team member, or a community contributor, and we're gonna make sure that you get an answer to your burning question. You can also continue to post on in the chat of this office hour session. We're gonna continue to monitor it. You can also reach out to us at Groundhog WP on both Facebook and Twitter. We try to make ourselves as accessible as possible, so never feel that uh, you won't be able to reach out to us, and no question is too silly or too small in order for us to spend time and make sure that it gets an answer for you. I want to thank everybody for spending the last 48 minutes with me. It's been a blast, and I will see everybody next week at on Tuesday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the next session of Office Hours. Bye, and have a wonderful day.